Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Z, and today we have a full guide on the public order and population growth of RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. Close to release now, guys. 27th of October, it's coming out, and I cannot wait. Today, we're going to be having a look at the public order and population growth and the differences between 0.5 and 0.6 which should be good fun and we're going to go through what factors affect both of those as well which will be pretty cool indeed so i have done a part one of this on the economy guys on law and money as well so do check that out in the description down below but let's first talk about the factors affecting public order which we can see over here as well you've got your governor influence which is there plus 40 percent which also helps with the law as well you can see that for every single one influence that your governor has they also give five percent influence which is pretty good for the public order the garrison strength of course we've got plus 80 percent here this is directly linked to the uh, difference in po between population and the amount of garrison you have so for a larger city say sardis down here uh, we've got a big army in here as well but for sardis for example you can see the garrison is 80 percent again but it's a larger city whereas over here on a smaller city if we take a look only 20 percent because although it's a small city only one greek slinger in there as well so the larger the city the more garrison you have to have to get that garrison influence We've got public health as well, which here is only 5%, I believe, probably because we've got a sewer. You can see we've got a sewer public order bonus from health there, which is really, really cool. It's also linked to population growth, which we'll go through later in the video. So there is entertainment as well, guys, and that is linked to the arenas now rather than the Odeons. The Odeons only give a bonus to happiness. They do not give a bonus uh, when you have games here so that's one big thing to note you probably want to be um, placing the arenas rather than the odians if you want that entertainment boost we've also got population boom as well which does give some uh, some order you've also got culture and religion guys now this is really important in the context of rtr imperium selective and rome total war vanilla often the culture penalty is associated with the buildings for example we are here as the seleucids and we have eastern hellenistic in here and you can see no culture penalty because we are an eastern hellenistic faction but if i come across to nikaia which i have just conquered and have a look in here you can see this big culture penalty now this is an amalgamation of both the culture and religion negatives that you are getting from the settlement but a lot of that culture penalty is coming from the fact that these buildings are all thracian buildings now how do you get rid of that very easily you upgrade all these buildings to your own culture or destroy them that is the other option i mean i would recommend just leaving them it's not too bad just upgrade them to your your culture so for example if we built a market here it would replace that it would reduce that culture penalty somewhat but you may also notice that we have a lot of different religions now in the game and that is going to be uh, another video in itself guys so don't worry too much about that for now so when i say religion guys i'm talking about this settlement religion that comes from the bar barbarian invasion now, for all intents and purposes, that is the actual culture. We're doing cultural stuff here like Macedonian, Bithynian, Ionian. But when I'm talking about it in terms of the gameplay, I'm going to say religion just to separate the two out. So you can tell between the culture of the buildings or the religion of the settlement. So you may notice that there are a lot more culture, uh, religions, should I say, in RTR Imperium Serectum, not Point six, and if the region is a different religion to your base religion which as the seleucids is macedonian you are going to get cultural penalties and cultural unrest faction leaders religion differs from settlements official religion in here which you can see dominant religion is lydian there and you can see here 
as well. We've got lots. Look at this. Thracian culture and Lydian culture in this settlement is causing problems because we've got Lydians, Thracians, Dorians. Now, in terms of 0.6, like I say, I'm going to do a video on this, so don't worry too much about it. But I wanted to point that out. That's another reason for your public order going down. In terms of this, though, in terms of the public order, they have reduced these effects. So previously, when you'd conquer a new region, you could get it happy. And then after a few turns, every now and then, you would get massive cultural unrest. But they have reduced those penalties quite a bit. So you shouldn't get random massive waves of cultural unrest every now and then. It should be a little bit more steady in this game. So a bit easier to plan for as well. And of course, finally, tax level affects your disorder, uh, your order and disorder as well. So tax level, if we go down to low, you can see tax bonus plus 30%. If we go up to, so normal is 0%. If we go up to high, you get minus 20% from the tax and very high minus 40%. So of course, that all affects what you're doing there as well. Now let's talk about the negative factors. We've talked about the tax and religion already. There's also unrest, which of course represents when you've taken a settlement, you can also get unrest from spies being in your settlement, guys. So if you just randomly get 15% unrest in a settlement, it generally means there's a spy in there. So try and root that spy out, get rid of the unrest. And of course, other things like Enemy armies marching through your lands, destroying uh, things, blockading your port, all those sorts of things. Rebels raiding you, those all lead to unrest as well. So the next thing that can bring your public order down, guys, is squalor. And in here, we have 55% squalor in Seleucia, which is quite a lot. Now, in RAS version 0.6, they've increased the effect of squalor on both public order and population growth to try and slow you down slightly when you get to some of these larger cities, because you're going to have more options for law and public order. So it's a balancing act there as well. Now, squalor is linked to the amount of population you have versus your governor's palace as well. Public order buildings should bring it down. So that's the way to bring it down, guys. Getting some public order buildings in there to reduce the squalor. Like we've talked about the culture penalty as well, based on both the religion and the building. So you can see in here, all the buildings are Eastern Hellenic, but we still have a culture penalty in there because the culture here is Mesopotamian rather than Macedonian as well. Now, distance to capital is a big negative for the uh, public order. We can see distance to capital here, 20%. They have reduced this as much as they can, guys. It's not uh, able to be reduced anymore. But you can see even all the way over here, it's only minus 40%. It's not too bad. So it's not horrendous. It's not going to be game-breaking or anything like that. The only way you can really change this is by changing where your capital is, which is quite an easy thing to do and isn't really that impactful. So you can just go and change your capital to somewhere else uh, if you just click this button down here. So if you want to do that to a more central location, you might have some better public order around your empire. And finally, of course, like at the beginning, uh, your governor traits can make a difference to the public order as well. Of course, if you've got a bad governor in there that's causing unrest, unhappiness, all that sort of thing can completely tank your public order as well. So those are all the things that will affect the public order. And of course, buildings are the one of the main things that you can do to affect your public order. So we're going to go through all the buildings now and talk about how they are different to RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.5. So let's start with the governor's house, guys. In 0.5, the governor's house gave 5, 10, 15, 15, and 15% 15 law. And it gave 0, minus 5, minus 10, minus 10, and minus 10% happiness. Now, this has been completely balanced out now. So you get law at the expense of 
happiness now. So now it's 5 and minus 5, 10 and minus 10, 15 and minus 15. So it's a net zero effect on your public order, but a good effect on your corruption like we talked about previously. So like I say, no real effect on your public order, but going to get rid of your corruption. Now let's move on to walls, guys. And in 0.5, walls gave a 5% law bonus for the stone wall. Uh, 5% for the large stone wall and 10% for the epic stone wall. And across the board, they gave a happiness of 5% for every single level. So if you got the wooden palisade, that was the most happiness you were going to get out of the walls. Now again, it's very similar to the governor's house. It's been balanced so that the happiness equals the law in terms of minus happiness equals the positive law. So minus 5 happiness for 5% law here all the way up to the epic stone walls that has 25% law and minus 25% happiness. So again, it's a net zero, but it's a way to reduce your corruption. So military buildings, guys, in 0.5, every single first level of military building gave minus 15% happiness and plus 15% law. If you've watched my Seleucid campaign, you'll realize it's a very good way of reducing corruption because they were so cheap and easy to get that 15% law, and it's a net zero on your happiness in 0.5. So it was a really nice way of just getting some more law in your cities. But now all the happiness and law effects have been removed for the military buildings, so you get no law and no happiness from them. So I know we talked about law a lot last time, but we can go over a little bit of it as well, and the execution squares are just the same as last time where you got 10, 15, and 20% law. So that's a bit of extra happiness as well because law is pretty much public order, of course. So yeah, a bit more public order with those, but they are just the same as 0.5. So let's now talk about trade buildings and the trader line, guys. In 0.5, you only got 5% law for the Agora, 5% happiness for the Agora, and 5% for the Great Agora, and 10% for the Merchant's Quarter. Now, in 0.6, again, you don't get anything for the trader or the market. But when we come to the Agora, we get a bit of law. And the Great Agora, we get 10% law. And the Merchant's Quarter, we now get 10% law and 10% happiness. So all of these three lines are actually better than they were previously in terms of bringing public order and law. So now on to the farms, guys. And in 0.5, you previously used to get minus 5% happiness for the top three levels of farms. That reduction in happiness has now been removed. So you don't get a, a negative to the happiness for the farms. And I think that's a common theme that you'll see throughout these changes, guys, is that mainly, you know, it's moved a lot more towards law so that you can get rid of that massive corruption that you get in large empires. So you can move a lot towards law and that's fine because the law also brings public order as well. So there might be a little bit of less public order on offer, but it's been replaced by a big boon to law. So you're getting a lot more law and maybe a little bit less just raw happiness in general. Now we have our grain imports and exports sort of building. Previously, guys, this gave public order. It gave happiness, but now it no longer does. So it just gives population growth, a massive amount of population growth, mind you, but no happiness to go along with it. So the sewers building previously, guys, in 0.5 gave 10, 15, and 20% uh, happiness due to public order it's only been reduced by about five percent in here and that again is to balance out those law effects that you get from all the other buildings that you're going to be building in here as well so now it's only five ten and fifteen but still a good amount of public order and of course really nice population growth as well so like we talked about in the last video guys academies give the same amount of law so it's five ten and 15% law in there as well, which is pretty cool. But in 0.5, one big change that we've seen is that we used to have Odeons, Lyceums, and Theatres for the Greeks. And these buildings for the Greeks 
were the games building. So that's where you would hold games. I guess simulating holding plays, that sort of thing. It's just called games in the game. And now that has been removed. So these no longer give games, but they do just give a base happiness. So 5% happiness, 10% happiness, and 15% happiness there. So still a good option if you want to make a happier city. But now the Greeks have access to the arenas now. That is where you're going to get your games from. And you can see they also give 5% happiness, 10% happiness, and 15% happiness as well so i've just processed in a, an arena here guys in seleucia and you can see with the yearly games we are only gaining that generic 50 sorry five percent happiness from this building whereas if we go up to say monthly games you can see entertainment 20 percent whereas previously no entertainment so it's just that five percent bonus Monthly games, 20% entertainment. It does cost you 400 to put these games on for monthly, which is not too bad, to be honest. And then another 400 for daily games. But you can see we go from 20% and daily games goes up to 30%. So really the best option in here is monthly games because you get the... You know, the cheapest cost of only 400 and the most bonus of 20%. Whereas we only get an extra 10% for that 400 gold for entertainment here as well. But it's always a fantastic option to have in some of your outer cities if they are having cultural unrest and that sort of thing. In terms of temples, guys, many, many temples give happiness. And pretty much all of them give happiness at the Pantheon level. You can see here... Even with the military temple here of Hephaestus, which gives armor and experience, it still does give happiness. They still will give happiness. But generally, a happiness temple will give double the amount. Even your law temples will give happiness. So pretty much every temple will have that 5, 10, 15, 20, 25% happiness all the way up to pantheon level. And most pantheons give a bit of extra law as well. Um, so yeah, pretty good for the happiness temples, of course. Like I say, they're always going to give that 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25% happiness in 0.6. And then you can have a look at what their other bonuses are as well. I'm not going to go through them all because there's plenty, plenty of temples. So many to go through. Uh, but yeah, like I say, pretty much every temple will have 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25% happiness in 0.6 which is really, really helpful. And then you can have a look at their other bonuses as well to judge whether you want them for public order, you want them for the military, or you want them for trade or population growth, all that sort of thing. So very useful in 0.6 are the temples. And finally, guys, with the Germans and the Celts, everyone that gets access to the Tavern and Bardic Circle, I don't believe the Iberians do. I think it's just the Germans and the Celts. Previously in 0.5, they got 5% and 10% happiness just from these buildings. And that was it. So that's all it was. But now we have quite a big difference. We've got a public order bonus of 5% and a bonus of 5%. So 10% bonus for the tavern as well as population growth. And a 10% happiness and 5% bonus. So 15% for the bardic circle with a 5% law as well. So it's a much stronger building now for your happiness. And that's mainly because, of course, the Celts don't really get those Odians and arenas that the other cultures will get. So it's to balance that out to make sure, as the Celts, you're going to get a bit more happiness and lore. So guys, let's move on to population growth. And I wanted to bring this map up again so you guys can see it once more that has... All the fertilities of the regions in the game now. And you find it by clicking on this one and ticking the base farming overlay. And we talked about it last time in terms of money. But of course, it's equally as relevant to population growth. So the higher the fertility, the more the population growth. And previously in 0.5, it was all reduced. All of this fertility levels were reduced to try and reduce the amount of population growth you've got in the world. But now, 
it goes from, of course, 1 to 14. Like we talked about last time, these red ones are very low fertility out in the desert, in the Alps, up here in the some of the northern steppes as well. Uh, and, of course, in the desert round here. But yeah, these green ones, these very high green ones, yellow upwards is really good fertility and it's better fertility than was in 0.5 as well. So there was, I believe, no yellow, I think, in 0.5. So it was all this orange and red. So now you're going to have access to a lot more population growth in these cities. And this fertility directly impacts both the money and the population growth. So you can see base farming level of 7% in Seleucia because it's a really high fertility region. Whereas if we went out to this region over here, which if you shift and right click, you can see the base farming level here as well. So out here in the base farming level is low. You can see the base farming level is only 1.5% because of course it's a lot less fertile region again here very low so that one's two percent so it's got a slightly big better um farming level i believe per one level it's about half a percent but don't exactly quote me on that because it might not be exactly that you can see this is only half a percent base farming level so that is linked directly to the fertility other things that can affect population growth of course are buildings and we're going to go through those in a little bit your public health as well which is linked in to your sewer line your water line so sewers public baths and aqueduct uh, of course your tax rate so on low you get half a percent on normal again it's zero on high you get minus half a percent on very high minus one uh, as well now, this food imports line here, that is to do with the trade resource on the map of grain. So, Chutha over here has grain, which of course will get give it a bit of extra population growth. But in here, Seleucia, if we look into the economic tab, we can see we are trading in Seleucia with Chutha for grain. And that gives us an extra bit of population growth in the food imports line as well well now farm upgrades of course are the main thing that's going to get your population growth but buildings really are the main area now inhibitors of course are the farming level if you've got a low farming level your growth is going to be a lot less the squalor of course like we talked about in the disorder squalor has been increased uh, for reducing population growth and public order so now you get a little bit more uh, squalor reduction for your population growth as well so let's now talk about buildings that can increase your population growth and previously in 0.5 i believe the governor's buildings didn't give any population growth but now they do they give a flat one percent across the board so every single level you get that standard one percent so obviously from the start that's just going to be a standard one percent bonus because everywhere will have at least the governor's house so it doesn't really make a difference upgrading them uh, for the population growth. It's going to stay at 1%. One thing to note here, guys, because of all that extra fertility on the map, I believe previously they only went up to about 5 or 6. Now it goes up to 14 fertilities. So because of all that extra fertility on the map, population growth in buildings across the board is slightly harder to come by to balance out those fertilities and that really means that population growth is going to come in your higher fertility regions which is very realistic of course like places like Patavium, like Seleucia, like the Nile Delta rather than your backwater towns in the middle of nowhere that have no population growth going for them because they're in the middle of the desert or in the middle of Siberia or something like that or the middle of the mountains where they're not going to be able to make uh, food quite as easily so of course across the board uh, there's been a slight reduction in the population growth from buildings but let's talk about traders previously in 0.5 you got 0.5 and 0.5 for the trader and market and then 111 for the rest of the uh, buildings in the trader line but now of course you can see you don't get any for trader and market or agora or great agora or merchants quarter so you get nothing from the trader line now 
Combined with that, the dockyard used to give 0.5% population growth, and now it does not. So previously in 0.5, you actually got less population growth from your farms. The top bonus here on the list, population growth bonus per turn, was just 0.5, 1 to uh, 1.52 and 2.5. And it's the same across the board for that. But previously on land clearance, you didn't get this second population growth bonus of 0.5 as well. So you only got 0.5. Now combined, it's 1. And there, of course, you get another 0.5 in communal farming. And then crop rotation, another 0.5. But then irrigation and great estates, you got 1%. And 1%. Previously on the Great Estates, you only got that 0.5 bonus as the bottom bonus. So now you do actually get more uh, population growth from the farms, which is a good way to balance out the reduction in population growth bonus from some of the other buildings. So grain imports, guys, used to be slightly different. We didn't have this fourth option in here. It used to just be three. It used to just be imports or exports. Um... So I'm not too sure about this exports and imports here, but previously it used to just be um, 1, 2, and 3%. But now it's actually 0.5, 1, 2, and 3%. So now it does equal the same amount, but it's shifted left by one level of city. So you can actually get it one level of city earlier. And of course, there's four tiers now rather than only three. So previously in 0.5, the water buildings, the sewers, public baths, and aqueduct, it's just been reduced by half, per, half a percent across the board from 0.5 because the sewers used to be 1%, now it's 0.5. Uh, the public baths used to be 1.5, now it's 1%. And the aqueduct used to be 2%, and now it's 1.5. So just a half a percent reduction across the board. One last thing for the Eastern and Nomadic factions, guys. The Eastern and Nomadic factions previously used to have four levels of herds. And we talked about this a little bit last time. And those four levels of herds gave 0.5, 1%, and 1.5% population growth for the three higher tiers of the herds. The lowest tier, I don't believe, maybe gave half a percent, something like that. Um, but now you only get two tiers. You get the organized herds and the substantial herds, and they both only give half a percent. But the reason why you want to build these is because these unlock your farming buildings. You can see here, uh, building this item requires that substantial herds are built. So if you want the juicy population growth from your farming as an eastern or nomadic faction, you need to build the herds and then you can actually get a bit of an extra bonus of half a percent from that anyway for the population growth so that's a good little option there if you want it so that is it for population growth guys like i say there's a bit of a reduction in the building capability of population growth but there is a lot more population growth base out there on the map so they've just done that to reduce uh, the effects from that base population growth that you're gonna get in some of these regions of course say like a medium one across here this three percent population growth and like some of these higher ones is a lot more like five percent base which is really really cool well i think that is everything for today guys any questions stick them down below do like and subscribe it really really does help the channel out and i thank you all for your continued support on these videos on ras weekends and the channel as well next weekend we're probably going to have an, a spicy little video so do check that out when it comes out but thank you very much for watching guys it's been a pleasure as always and i will see you all again on the next video